tonight. The bullet-riddled body of a 23-year-old is discovered inside his vehicle. His mother says she is devastated by his loss. Police speak on the latest fatal incident of gun violence and weekend operations that led to the discovery of high-powered weapons and ammunition. And two fires, one in the south, another in the north, leave families counting their losses, but also their blessings. The details of these stories and more are coming up. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovelace and Amy Jacob. Good night. It is Monday, the 14th of September, 2020. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. I'm lovely St. Amy Joseph. Thank you for joining us. The bullet-riddled body of a young man was discovered inside his vehicle along the Pigeon Island Causeway on Sunday. He has been identified as Karim McPhee, who did not live one day past his 23rd birthday, given that he was found dead on that same day. His mother, Sophia Dickinson, spoke to Hot 7 TV about the ordeal of losing her young son. Geneve Gonzag begins our reporting. Another young man has lost his life to gun violence. 23-year-old Karim McPhee of Kaimaji Grosile was discovered dead in his vehicle along the Pigeon Island Causeway on Sunday, September 13. We spoke with the mother of the deceased, Sophia Dickinson. On his 23rd birthday on Sunday 13th September, Karim McPhee was not cutting his cake and celebrating with family. Instead, his family members were identifying his body. The mother says she last saw her son on the Saturday and when he was leaving home, asked him to be careful. Dickinson explained that she is crushed as she lost him on his birthday. Well, like I say, I'm just going to bury him and... I'll think of what to do later. Yeah. I just want to bury him. I'll know what to do later. According to the mother, while her son had gotten into trouble a few times, he did not deserve to be murdered. He said to me, Mommy, you know I was in problems with some boys in Grosily, right? I said, Yes. He, he well, an altercation went on, and then he, um, the friend was fighting with his friend. And he came and separated and the fella gave him a slap. And he shot the fella in his leg after. So I told him Karim, you didn't have to do that. You know, I pleaded, I said, but it's not everything you have to use a gun because, you know, why should you use a gun not? and thing. Then he told me those same people make peace with him. And I told him, I don't trust that. That peace you're telling me there, I don't trust that peace. So just be careful. You could say hi, you could say hello, because you're born and raised in Grosily together. You're all so nice. You understand? Just know what you're doing and how you're doing it. You understand? And then you could talk to them, but just know how you're talking to them. Where you don't go around them, don't go, you know? And stuff like that. And he said, Mommy, I know. Mommy, I'm not stupid. And he was a very smart man. A close friend of McPhee says he will be remembered most for his smile and his little quips. She says he was strong-willed and he will be missed tremendously. When he wants something, he would come and smile at you and say, like, you're checking for me, man. You know, that's his thing. Karim was a darling despite of anything or else that anybody had to say about him. When it comes to his defense, Karim will not stand and allow you to do what you want with him. I last saw Karim on Saturday. He said, um, Shorty, you're checking for me, man. Tomorrow is my birthday. I tell him, yeah, I remember. And he said, um, what do you get in me? I said, what do you want, Karim? He said, um, I'll take a Henny, Henny Black. I said, okay, Karim, check me tomorrow. And while I'm asleep, my daughter called me like after seven. And she said, mommy, wake up, wake up. I said, what happened? She said, mommy, wake up, wake up. I said, what? And she said, mommy, your friend, they just killed him and whatnot. Police have launched an investigation into the shooting death of 23-year-old Karim McPhee. Reporting from the community of Grosile for Hot 7 TV, I am Genevieve Gonzag. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force is currently pursuing several leads in connection with the killing of Karim McPhee. As told by Acting Commissioner of Police George Nicholas, investigations began after McPhee's body was found riddled with bullets in his vehicle along the Pigeon Island Causeway. Shaka Wooding has more. 
On Sunday, September 13, 2020, Kareem Mukfi, a 22-year-old resident of Kaimaji Grozali, was discovered with no vitals inside his personal vehicle, which appeared abandoned along the Pigeon Island Causeway. He was pronounced dead on site by a medical practitioner. According to Acting Assistant Commissioner of Police George Nicholas, McPhee's body showed visible signs of distress with what appeared to be multiple gunshot wounds about his body. On Sunday, the 13th of September 2020, about 6 a.m., the body of Karim McPhee of Kaimaji Grozile was discovered in his vehicle along the Pigeon Island Causeway. He was subsequently pronounced dead by a medical practitioner. There was apparent um, gunshot, about, gunshot wounds about the body. There has been no arrest in this matter thus far, but the police are pursuing some leads in relation to this matter. Nicholas denied the rumored confirmation of a contract killing, stating that it is too early in the investigation to make such pronouncements. It is too early to make that determination, but we are carrying out our investigation to try and establish a motive for the killing. The ACP disclosed that at the time of his death, McPhee was on bail for illegal possession of a firearm and ammunition. His death brings the national homicide figure for 2020 to 34, inclusive of two police killings. Jacques Wooding, Hot 7 News. An early morning blaze at Cedar Heights View Fort reduced a three-bedroom dwelling house to rubble. The occupants of the house all made it to safety. However, they were only able to save a fridge, a stove, and the clothes on their backs. Leading firefighter of the St. Lucia Fire Service, Stacy Joseph, spoke with our newsroom. Officers at the Viewfort Fire Station responded to a call on Sunday 13th September at approximately 1.58 a.m. The information received stated that a, there was a dwelling house ablaze at Cedar Heights in Viewfort. Emergency personnel found the fire confined to one single-story dwelling structure of concrete construction. The three-bedroom house, which measured approximately 16 by 46 feet, was completely destroyed. No one was reported injured as it relates to this incident. The cause of the fire is unknown. The family is now appealing for public assistance. Individuals willing to assist are asked to call 724-0031 or 716-7228. Now, a Bonaire family was alerted to a fire in their backyard early Monday morning by their dogs. A shed and storeroom had erupted in flames. The owner of the property says while he is happy no one got hurt, the family has suffered a huge loss. Geneve Gonzag reports. Fire service officials were summoned to the scene of a fire at Bonaire Marie Seal. A wooden shed and a storeroom burst into flames at around 11 a.m. this morning. Hot 7 was able to speak to the owner of the property. Franklin Ram Jawan says he received a call from his family stating his storeroom was ablaze on Monday morning and quickly returned home. He says while he lost a lot of goods in the burnt properties, he is just thankful that no one got hurt. It's just the material things. It is, you just let it go. There's nothing to do with it anymore. But if somebody was there, that would have been a problem. But I'm glad that there was no one there. And um, it's just material things. You just have to work hard and try and rebuild somehow. He says he cannot say for certain what caused the fire, but suspects that it may have been the dog food left on the stove. Andrea, who was the person who first saw the fire, gave us an overview of what happened and how she reacted. She says what started out with a little pop turned into a huge explosion. I took a look out the window and I saw the shed on fire. So I came back out as quickly as I could because as you can see I'm on crutches and I, I started shouting for my niece. I told her to, no I went to the, to the house phone and it's, it's, it's not working, I couldn't get a connection so I, I tell her grab my cell phone and call, call her father and call the fire service because there's a fire in the back so she looked and she saw it. So we started running around, so I eventually called her father, she called the fire service, and then we called her mother. We all came outside, and as we were coming out, we heard a louder explosion. And when we came out, we went around to look, and the fire was raging by then, and then people on the road started 
looking in and asking us if we were okay and what was going on. She says she is glad no one got injured and extremely thankful that the fire service responded in quick time. The cause of the fire is currently being investigated by the St. Lucia Fire Service. Hot 7 left officials from the fire service tending to the flames. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Janive Gonzag. You're watching the Hot 7 TV nightly news. Still to come, high-powered weapons are discovered during weekend police operations. The police force calls for public assistance to locate a man wanted for questioning. And Dr. Venus Cherry claps back at the critics who question his credentials and motives. That and more coming up after the break.